artificially intelligent bots serving up the right answers thousands of times a day. Hi, I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet, and joining me is Robert Lacasio. He is the founder and CEO of Live Person. Welcome, Robert. Hey, Tanya, how are you doing? I'm good. So let's talk about customer care and the evolution of artificial intelligence interaction with humans versus the actual customer person. What, what is Live Person? So Live Person, actually, I started it in 1995, and I invented when you chat online for customer care. So that's how we got started. But today, uh, where we are is we have a, a new platform we launched a year ago in which when you go to like T-Mobile's app, there's a little messaging icon, you click on it, and you can start messaging with someone at T-Mobile asynchronously. So like you do with WhatsApp and Facebook. Um, so the technology is very different than what I originally had, which was synchronous web chat. We're now into mobile and messaging, and then that brings in bots, AI, um, and all that technology. So we're basically out there saying, you know, you don't have to phone, pick up the phone, call a customer center, wait on hold. You can message in at scale and connect with an agent, a live agent or, or a bot through our technology platform. How have customer expectations changed now that you have especially digital natives that are in the mix? I mean, do we prefer bots over people? Well, we prefer not being on hold. So the, the, the consumer pain point is hold. And, and, and analog technology, which is voice platforms, is the evil doer that we've had to deal with and lost time in our lives. What we want as consumers, we want to multitask. We want a way to ask a question to a brand, get a bot, get a human, whatever it is, but it's on my time. And that's one thing we've seen. We have over 100 big brands that are live on doing messaging. We have a bunch of small ones, but these 100 brands are like the American Expresses and the T-Mobiles and, and companies like this. And they we're seeing these great customer interactions where I message, I go about my day, I'm in a meeting, message pops back to me, I can get back to it. So this allows consumers to own the time, their time back, to, to do things on their time, and this creates a better customer experience. How else is artificial intelligence actually transforming the customer care experience for the consumer on the consumer end, as well as maybe even for, you know, brands and management? So to, to uh, set the stage on artificial intelligence in the care world, and it's a little techie, but um, unlike a self-driving car where you'll have millions of endpoints, so you, it's driving and, and anything can happen at any time, in customer care, there are about 60 to 80 different what we call intents, intentions of a consumer. I want to pay my bill. I want new service. I want to add a line to my phone, whatever it is. So there's a very finite amount of questions that a consumer will ask. So we can use artificial intelligence in a much different way, and we can get to a very high rate of, of answering satisfaction versus all these machine learning endpoints you would have on like, once again, a self-driving car, a dog can run out, the light turns red, a tree falls down. It's a very, very solvable problem in customer care using artificial intelligence. And it's not even like that big of artificial intelligence of a problem to solve, but we're using it in a way to get through these 60, 80 use cases. So what is the best mix then of artificial intelligence or chatbots and maybe human interaction? I mean, is there a, a perfect formula for that for, for businesses who have call centers? Yeah, I, it, at, at scale, because um, I have the data, uh, you know, we, we, we generate 50 million chats and messages a month on our platform. So we have all this date, conversational data and we would look at it. About 80% of those conversations can be automated. So in customer care, there's a lot of there's a lot of questions that you don't need a human to process it. Where you need the human is sometimes when there's a new intent, uh, there's something that needs a little bit more processing back and forth. But most of the time, we can use a, 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 a bot to process an intent, a question. Are customers' expectations changing? Meaning based on their demographics. So you have digital natives that might actually be expecting that, but you also still have baby boomers and maybe folks who have, you know, been used to that human interaction. Are those changing as well? It's not, it's, it's really, well, first thing is we look at messaging as a platform to deliver the bot. Messaging is being used by 80 year olds and eight year olds. I mean, it's like across the board. So if you look at like a telco, like T-Mobile, it's like, it's their customer base are messaging using WhatsApp, SMS, 
grandmas are messaging their grandkids. You know, it's, so that's, that's the foundation of, of consumer behavior. Above that is, I just want to get my question answered. Whether it's a human or an automated process, we don't care as long as it gets done. Now, most bots, unfortunately, they, they suck. Like we were, we've, we've used them there they're, they're, cause they're created from a technology perspective, but not from a conversational design perspective. And that's what we know. Now you lead with conversational design and there's a technology platform to, to deploy a bot that'll deliver that, but you just don't throw a bot out as a technology. And that's what you're seeing today. A lot of that is out there and that's why we're not having great experiences with bots. When you say bot, are these text-based or are you building voice in there as well? Yeah, it could be voice-based uh, conversations, uh, obviously text-based conversations. So either way, we, we, we today take in stuff from Amazon Alexa. So you can talk to Alexa and get to a brand, and a bot and a brand. So either way, um, but once again, conversational design, which is actually a new field. It's really a new field uh, that's coming about is, is sort of at the heart of how you create a conversation with a bot that would be very empathetic, that would feel more human. Are there any industries that are specifically leading the way in incorporating artificial intelligence and chatbots in their customer care that are a great example for, for other brands and businesses? You know, I, like right now, telcos, banks, our biggest customers, because they have the huge, huge, huge contact centers. They are doing the best when it comes to deploying bots and AI because they have scale. So we see things like Vodafone in the UK has Toby, which is a bot powered by IBM and Watson on our platform. And they're getting very good containments. So we have KDDI, which is one of the largest telcos in Japan. They usually have a bot from Toshiba. They have a 90% rate of solving the question or answering the question with their bots. So I can look all around, there's, there's bots in, in all of our customer bases, but telcos and banks have the, the greatest to gain by doing this. And they, they're the first out, I think, being the most innovative. AI and customer care, does that spell gloom and doom for call centers um, or is there a silver lining? I actually think there's a renaissance that's about to happen. Uh, so with every threat, the threat is a change. So you could say if 80% of interactions are automated, that means that 80% of the people will be losing their jobs. Uh, the reality is when you deploy a bot today, there are bot managers. So we have conversational designers, which the best conversational people are people in contact centers because they're conversing all day. So they understand how to script a bot, how to do the conversational design. And then we have bot managers that manage the bot and actually watch it. If it fails, they jump in. So there's a whole way, I think, that actually takes labor, which that's how it's looked at as like a labor rate of $6 an hour or $15 an hour, depending if it's onshore or offshore. And that can be $20, $30, $40 an hour because of how value in helping automation happen. So I think there's a renaissance about to happen first. Obviously, five or 10 years from now, it may be different. But right now, we're at a place where these people have the greatest knowledge. What are maybe some new jobs that might be created um, with the maybe elimination of the human interaction uh, and replacement with the artificial intelligence? Conversational designers are um, sort of at, at the heart of, uh, of a job. If you go on LinkedIn right now, you'll see about 10 conversational designers. We have four of them that, we're on our, that are part of our company. It's not, it's not a big field. Uh, funny enough, my sister, who has been in like the entertainment world, screenwriting and stuff, I told her, get into conversational design if you really want to like make it to the next level. She started building bots on Facebook. I think this is an area for... Uh, screenwriters, gaming people, uh, it could be contact center people to design the conversations that have to happen to be with a bot. So you give, we look at bots as agents. When you look at a bot as an agent, like a human agent, you, you don't just throw it out there. You have to train it. You have to script it. You have to manage it. And so conversational design is one part. The other thing is bot managers. These are the people who are managing the bots when they're deployed. And, and make sure that they're operating. What happens in that case is that they watch the bot. If the consumer asks a question, the bot can not answer it, they answer it, but then they go back into the technology and put that question in. So the next time a consumer asks it, the bot can answer it. And very quickly you can scale versus throw a bot out. And then like at the end of the day or a week later, you look at how many times it failed. You don't really know what happened. 
on our platform, we built the platform to make the bot transparent. And we have a, a design studio on the platform so you can manage the bot, design the conversation, deploy it, and watch it. We even have a way to measure sentiment in real time so we can see if the bot's creating a positive experience or a negative experience to the consumer. And all of these tools with the humans around it is what makes the bot thing powerful if you do it that way. Well, that's very insightful. And all I'm looking forward to is not spending an hour on hold when I call about my internet service. So, hey, however, whatever it takes, Robert, to make that happen, I really appreciate your time and sharing some insight on the future of customer care and humanization of customer experience or dehumanization, maybe yeah. might be a better word. Uh, what, if somebody wants to follow you and they want to maybe connect with live person, what's the best way they can do that? Uh, I'm on Twitter, so you can get me on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. Uh, so I'm, it's Rob Locasio is my handle on Twitter. They can get me there. Uh, they can email me at Rob at live person if they want a uh, pretty straightforward email address so they can get me there. I'm also, I, I mentor entrepreneurs. People are starting companies. I've been in this business for over 20 years. I started sleeping on a couch in my office. So I've taken the hard work to get here. So I'm always open for people to ask me questions about even them building their businesses. Well, and I will testify to that. He's accessible. That's for sure. Thank you so much for your time again, Robert. And if you want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here at ZDNet or Tech Republic, or maybe find me on Twitter at Tanya Hall Radio on Twitter. I love to tweet. And I'm also on Facebook by searching for the Tanya Hall Show. Until next time.